Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. You've been good to me. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. He saved my soul, saved my soul from sin and shame. Now my now life, my life will never be the same. Because the French of Christ have been changed. Sure been good to me. Sure been good to me. Lord, you've been good to me. Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me, oh, sure been good to me. Say it again. Sure been good to me. Lord, you've been good to me, oh, Lord. You've been good to me, Lord. You've been good to me, sure been good to me. Sure been Let me. Let me tell you what he's done for me. Some of the good things that he's done for me. Save my soul from sin and shame. Now my life will never be the same. For the face of God, I've been changed. Sure been good to me. 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 Lord, you've been good to me. Say, Lord, you've been good to me. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. Sure been good to me. Say it again. Sure been good to me. with joy to the Lord, all the earth. We worship the Lord with gladness. We come before the Lord present with singing, with joy. We acknowledge that the Lord God, that he made us, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving, 
we enter the Lord's court with praise. We give thanks to God and we praise His holy name. For the Lord is good and His unfailing love continues forever and His faithfulness continues to all generations. I got a question for you. Are you fired up? Are you fired up to the Lord? Somebody shout out to me. Fired up. Fired up. Get ready to go. Come on now. Fired up. With my hands lifted up And my mouth filled with praise With a heart of thanksgiving I will bless the Lord Oh, 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 oh,
And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, including you. All of them were filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and they began speaking in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Keep that in mind. As the Spirit enabled them. Acts 2, 17 and 18. Catch this one. In the last days, that's now. In the last days, God said, I will, God will pour out my spirit on, heart, on all people. Sons, catch this one, sons. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see what? Vision. Your old men, like me, oh yeah. We'll dream dreams, even on my service, both men and who? Don't be afraid, it's women's on there. Both men and women, I will pour on my spirit. You need to just put that down, man. I will pour on my spirit in those days, and they will do 
what? Prophesy. Yes. That's the word of God for the people of God. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Say praise God if you can. Up. Ready to go. Amen. All right, I'm going to calm down. I'm calm down. All right, praise the Lord. Now, if you would be so kind, we will get our offering prepared, I believe. Amen. My sister will bring down. You know, don't stop fired, being fired up because the offering comes. This is when you really get fired up because there's a blessing connected to offerings. Come on now. There's a blessing. Hey, man, you got to get your seed in the ground in order to reap something. Hallelujah sometimes. Father God, we just thank you so much for this young lady. We thank you, Lord, that you have given her the responsibility to bring down the offering box and the tithe box. Your word declare, Lord, that we can prove you that you will not open windows of heaven, pour out blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. But if you haven't sold, you can't expect that. So, Father God, we thank you for everyone that sold. And those that didn't have seed to sow, we pray that you would give them seed to sow and bread to the eater. Father, we thank you for these precious offerings and that they would be used to uplift God's kingdom. Somebody say in Jesus name, amen, amen, amen. All things. Hallelujah somebody. All things come of thee. Oh Lord and of thy own and we give one oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being so faithful in your giving. Let me just share this short story. There was a lady named Edith S. Child. You know, historians probably know about her. She was uh, faithful to Obama's campaign back in 2012. And she, she fired up the, the president. He was just a senator then. He came in from out of the rain one day to South Carolina in a little place where there was only 20 people. And Edith's child was sitting way back there in the audience, and all of a sudden she said, fired up, ready to go. And he caught a fire. And you know, as we all know, he won two, two, two elections for president. Because he was what? Fired up and ready to go. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Amen. Praise God for Reverend DeBro this morning. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. If you notice, when you came into our sanctuary this morning, you received, amen, a pamphlet, amen, and you also received a pen. And I spoke with um, Mrs. Uh, Oliver uh, last week regarding um, here at Carries, due to the fact of the condition of the world we're living in, we want to do something every month to commemorate and to remember black history. And so that's the reason why you're seeing these pamphlets this month. Hopefully next month we'll have a, amen, a PowerPoint slide or some of that nature. But we're going to try to, and I'll get with uh, Mrs. Oliver, amen, and a, a few more people that can assist us on this. But we're asking every month, amen, for the rest of the year, one month out of a Sunday, I mean, excuse me, one Sunday out of a month that we can observe and commemorate black history and the reason why is is that we are living in times saints where people are trying to reach they're trying to erase our history and we don't ever want to be a people amen that would be a part of that amen that movement so if we can't do it in the school system we can't do it in our amen communities we can do it in the church and so please be a be, be mindful that one Sunday out of every month we're going to do something to observe black people and colored people in history, amen, here in America, amen. And I think that is commendable that we, uh, I asked Mrs. Oliver about that. She didn't bring it to me, I brought it to her, and she just agreed with it. And so as a pastor, amen, as a time of education, 
We don't, we, won't, we don't ever want to forget, yes, we know that we're saved. Yes, we know that we're redeemed. Yes, we know that God has pulled us out of the hands of the enemy. However, we also want to never forget where we've come from. Amen. And we thank God for his grace and thank God for his mercy. I have my pen on right now. Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. Amen. I pray that we'll put our pens on. Amen. I pray that you'll look through this, uh, this manual. Amen. It's a pretty, pretty nice manual for what I saw this morning. Amen. But that's the reason why you have this, saints of God. We are going to not just do the common thing of every February. We're going to uh, recognize people of color. But we're here in Carries, amen, we're going to recognize them one Sunday out of every month that God may be glorified. Amen? Amen. amen. God bless you. Come on, choir blessings. Amen. <laughs>
God can. God can. God will. God will. God will fix it. God will fix it for you. I tell you, God can. God can. I know that He will. God will. God will fix it. Yeah, he'll fix it, it for you. you. Well, God can. God can. God will. God will. God will fix it. God will fix it for you. I tell you, God can. God. I know that he will. God will. God will fix it. Yeah, will he'll fix, fix it, it for you. Someone sick in the hospital. Doctors done all they could do. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. My God will see you through. God gave Moses power in the rod. I'm here to tell you there's healing in the word of God. God can. God can. God will. God will. I know you fixed it. God will fix it for you. God can, God can, God will, God will, I know you fix it, God will fix it for you. My God can, God can, I know that he will, God will, he'll fix it, yeah. For you, let me show you. God can. God can. Can I get a witness? God can. God can. Woman with an issue of blood. God can. She'll tell you. God can. God can. Blind man on the side of the road. God can. He'll tell you. God can. God can. Abraham, God, yeah. God provided you with a lamb, God, yeah. and you know about old Job, God, yeah. how he waited on the Lord, God, yeah. to let you know he's an on time God, God yeah. and to let you know God can, God, yeah. I tell you he'll fix it, God will fix it. Yes, he'll fix it. God will fix it. Won't he fix it? God will fix it. Yeah, fix it. God will fix it. God will fix it. God will fix it. All you got to do is call him. God will fix it. I know he'll see you through. God will fix it. Whatever you need today. God will fix it. Just go down. Your knees and pray. God will fix it. All you have to do, God will fix it. Just let God have His way. God will fix it. My God will fix it. God will fix it. Whatever you're going through, God will fix it. My God will fix it. God will fix it. I know He'll fix it for you. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it, yeah, he'll fix it. God will fix it, fix it, fix it. He'll fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. God can, God will, and God will, God will. He'll fix it, God will fix it for you. Yeah, 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 I know you'll 
fixed it. 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 Call him. Fixed it. In the morning. Fixed it. Call him. Fixed it. Noonday. Fixed it. Call him. Fixed it. Every day. Fixed it. Call him. Fixed it. Fixed it. Fixed it. Fixed it. Fixed it. Won't he fix it? Fix it. All you got to do is pray. Won't he fix it? Fix it. Fix it for you every day. He'll fix it. He'll fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. God can. God can. And God will. <laughs> and all the people said, Amen. How many know the Lord will fix it this morning? If you let him have his way, he'll fix it, saints. Amen. I believe Miss Clark, amen, is able to witness that, amen. 90 plus years, come on now. I believe she is able to witness that God can fix it, amen. And so we praise God for that this morning. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer and get right into our time of teaching on this morning. Father, we're grateful. We're grateful, Lord God, that your presence is in this place. Yes. You said in your word where two or three are gathered together agreeing as touching, you would be in our midst. And so, Lord, we know that you're here. We didn't. Lord God, had to invite you in, Lord God, because you're omnipotent, omniscient, and you're omnipresent. Yes. You're the God who knows all. You're the God who sees all. And you're the God who has all power in your hand. Yes. And God, all you ask for us to do is to worship and to praise you. You said if you would be lifted up, God, you would do all the drawing. And so, Lord, thank you that you have given us a responsibility, Lord God, in this covenant we have with you. We thank you, God, that some have come for one thing and some have come for another. But, God, we've all made our way to this place, God, just to worship and praise you. It's now time for the true worshipers to worship you in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful, God, that we know our God, and we know the power that our God has, Lord God, and we know in you we live, and in you we move, and in you we have our being. Lord, thank you for the anointing that makes worshiping, that makes service so easy, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus this morning as we decrease. Lord, we ask you to increase within us. God, allow the fire to burn on the inside of us this morning that we would preach with power. That, God, your people would know that you are God who knows and cares about their situation. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here at Carrie's Baptist Church. Thank you for your hand of protection upon this ministry, God. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to stand when others would fall. We give your name the glory and we give your name the honor. And we give your name the praises, God, because it's your name every knee will bow and every tongue must confess. Holy Spirit, you breathe in this place. Fill us up today. And as we walk away, we would have no void places. And we would know our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we're able to ask or think through the power that worketh in him. We love you, Father. And we glorify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. We praise God again this morning. Just for God's presence in the room, saints. God is here. Amen. I don't know if you know that, but he's here right now with us. And all you got to do is just reach out and touch. And he'll fix it. Amen. If you just reach out and touch him, he'll fix it. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She reached out and touched him. Everybody else was stumbling, stumbling towards him. But he reached, she reached out and touched him. And she was made whole. And I don't know about you. I want to be whole in God. Amen. 
I want to be whole in the Lord. Amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness there are and the world and they that dwells are in it. So we praise God for that this morning. Come on, give God one more clap and hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. We thank God for our wife. Amen. The first lady is not with us this morning, her and Zoe. First lady is going out of the country. Amen. So I'm going to be by myself for the next, amen, 12 days. Zoe would be with me, amen. The Lord would be my, my wife would not be with me. Keep her in prayer, amen. As she get on the plane, amen. Zoe's dropping her off at the airport, and she's going away for a moment, amen, to uh, visit some individuals. And I pray that she have a great time, amen. You be in prayer for her just like you be in prayer with me. We thank God for these ministers this morning. Thank God for Reverend Staten, Reverend DeBro, amen. Thank God for your fire that you bring into this place, amen, to help us know that we serve a God who's worth us honoring him, amen. That's what Reverend DeBro was doing this morning. He was reminding us that our God is worth, amen, us honoring him, amen. And so we give God the honor and glory for him, amen, this morning. Thank God for our deacons, amen. We honor them, amen. We are in our second week, coming upon our second week of deacon tra deacons training here at Carey. She'll be our third week, but we had some Zoom technicalities, amen, the first week. So we praise God last week we was able to get on Zoom and make sure that uh, these candidates that are going to be here at Carriage to serve in our deacon's ministry are being properly trained, so we thank God for them. Thank God for our trustees. We give God the earning glory for them. They are working behind the scene, and, you know, I have an opportunity on my job to come out and visit uh, because I'm a housing inspector for the government, and so I'm out about all the time in this area, and I have an opportunity to ride by the church on most occasions. And every time I ride by here, one of the trustees are out here doing something. Amen. Sister Sheena was out this week, amen, waiting for someone to come in to do some work or do some estimate on some one part of the building. So we thank God for them, amen. They are actively involved to make sure that we as a body are secure, amen, and not only secure in this building, for securing our finances, so we thank God for them this morning. Thank God for our ushers, amen. We praise God for our junior ushers, amen. We praise, come on, give God a hand, come and pray for them this morning. Thank God for their parent, their, their mother, for making sure that they are here, amen. And we praise God for them. Thank God for this choir, amen. Come on, give God a hand, come and pray this morning. Thank God for Reverend Brown, and most of all, thank God for our media ministry. You know, this morning when I came in the room, I heard the Lord says that uh, effort. I did hear the Lord say that Miss Miss Betty, Sister Betty, was walking down here. She was walking down to the choir, and I heard the Lord say effort. And you know what that means, saints, is that God is pleased with us making an effort. I want you to hear me this morning. He's pleased with us making an effort. There's many, many things that young people can say about older people. One thing they cannot say about us when we, when we get old, that we, may, we make an effort. Amen. Amen. So please know, saints of God, never think that your life is not an influence to someone. Because every time you make an effort Amen. to go forward and do what God has asked you to do, you are an example to someone. Amen. I'm telling you, when I saw Sister Betty walk down here, I just heard the Lord say effort. And so I want to commend you, Carries, amen. I want to commend you that, you know, some people may look at this ministry as have no worth or have no purpose because we are older. Amen. But how many know this morning, the Bible says, David says, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. That's what David says. David says, not only when I was young, I saw effort in God, but when I got old, I saw effort in him. Now, I could preach right there, but I am not going to stay right there. And so I want to share with you this morning, saints of God, you be encouraged. Amen. Every time you get up, every time you take one foot, one step in front of another step, God is pleased with your effort. Anybody can do nothing, but all of us can do something. Are y'all with me this morning? And so thank God for your effort, amen, that you have not given up in the race, you've not allowed COVID-19 to cause an excuse, that you're not going forward, amen, but you're still making an effort 
to be in God's presence. We know that, amen, we can be in his presence wherever we go, but the Bible tells us, according to the, according to the ecclesia, that we are to not to forsake ourselves assembling together. That's a command from God. And why is that, Pastor? Because every time you and I come together in this place, we are sharpening one another. Are y'all with me this morning? So I want to commend you this morning for your effort. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning for your effort. Thank you, Miss Oliver, for your effort. Amen. Thank God for your effort. We praise God for that. Amen. As I stated, amen, I, t I called her. I was in study and prayer. The Lord spoke to me and talked to me about that. And I called her, and she said, bless your heart, Pastor. We're on the same sheet of music. And so we praise God, amen, that... Uh, we're all thinking the same thing. Some of us are. And so here at Carrie's every month, one Sunday, we are going to celebrate people of color. Amen. I hope that don't make you feel uncomfortable because that last time I looked, I believe we colored. Amen. And so we ought to celebrate, amen, people of color that has went before us and allowed us these opportunities that we have, amen, to continue on doing what God has called us out to do. Turn me over to the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew 15, 29 through 31, we want to talk about it, sitting in a place to serve. Setting in a place to serve. That's what we want to talk about this morning. Setting in a place to serve. My brothers and sisters, we have all heard the saying, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And this saying comes from the teachings of Solomon, who was given credit for writing the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is 20, the 16th chapter, 27th verse. It says it this way, according to the Living Bible. It says, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. And when we look at the Greek meaning of idle, that word literally means to be lazy or it means to be useful. <laughs> Imagine that. Hey man, idleness calls people to be lazy, to be useful, have no purpose in life. Solomon tells the readers the purpose of one's hands and lips. Therefore, now that man understands and knows what role their hands plays, and they should lift up their holy hands before the Lord, and they understand what the role of your lips plays, that you ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But we're living in times and seasons where so many do not know why they have hands. It's very challenging for people, to, uh, people that love to go out, amen, and go to different restaurants because we're living in such of a time where Every time you get to a restaurant, amen, there is no service to help you when it comes to your food. And I'm even to the point now, Brother Brown, I'm at the point in my life right now that I have kind of scaled back, Brother Eddie, from going out to eat. Why is that, Pastor? Because every time you get to the restaurant, you don't know if the person who's taking your money, amen, serving you, is going back cooking the same food, amen, that, 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 that you have ordered. It used to be a time that the server wouldn't touch the food, and it used to be a time the person who cooked the food wouldn't touch the money. Are y'all with me this morning? But we don't know now. When we go out to these restaurants, your server may be touching the money, touching the food, and serving you at the same time. Why? Because we're living in a time where you just can't find nobody that wants to work. Imagine that. We live in an hour where nobody believes that having a job is the right way to go. But according to my Bible, my word tells me a man that does not work, the word says y'all do not eat. Are y'all with me? Now, I'm from South Carolina. I'm a country boy. And I can remember from the time I understood my name was Warren, every Saturday we had to work. Whether we was cutting wood, whether we was hauling hay, whether we was picking peas, whether we were picking peanuts, whether we were picking apples off the tree, mama said it was at 731, it's time to get up and work. And so I don't understand now that we're living in why some people, and I'm not going to say it's a younger generation because it's all generations, 
I don't understand why in this hour that we're living in, why there are some people does do not believe that God has ordained them to serve. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes, sir. We think about that from the scripture. The Bible tells us, according to Matthew, the 23rd verse, 23rd chapter, 11th verse, it says, the greatest among you shall be your servant. 20, that, that 12th verse says, and whosoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he that humbles himself will be exalted. And as a, as a servant, a man who wants to do what God has ordained him to do, Jesus is the prime example why many people ought to be saved. Because when you accept Christ as your personal Savior, the one thing you will discover as a disciple of his is that Jesus was a man about actions, and he always had a job to do in the world in which we live in. I wish I had some help in this room. Amen. You remember the story in the Bible? Well, it was, he was at the age of 12. He and his parents was on his way to the temple. And Jesus veered off. Amen. He veered off the, the path. And he tells his parents, do you not know it's time for me to be about my father's business? What Jesus was saying, saints of God, he was saying that God has given me a specific service in the earth and now I'm to sit in that place to serve those who are in need in the hour in which they're living in. Saints, can I tell you something this morning? God is still have Jesus sitting in that place. And there's not a need that you and I have that God cannot fulfill if we come to him. That's why he says, ask and it shall be given. He says, seek, and ye shall find. He says, knock, and the door shall be open. And I wonder this morning, do I have one or two people in the room this morning? You have a need, amen, and the only person can supply your need is Jesus. Well, can I tell you this morning, if you ask him, he will do it. If you seek him, he will find you. If you, if you knock, he'll open the door. And when he opens the door, he is going to give you everything you have need of. That you can continue on going forward in the things of God. Come on, clap those hands this morning. In our text this morning, Matthew chapter 15 reveals some of the many works Jesus does on his way as he served others. For example, chapter, the chapter opens up, amen, the, the scribes and the Pharisees from Jerusalem. Ask is Jesus about his disciples eating bread with unclean hands. Jesus serves them by showing the error of their ways because of their transgressions that, that was commanded by God before, according to their traditions. However, in our lesson today, you will see how God serves us on a mountain. And he serves us on a mountain because he's trying to get us to understand that he is the only one and the only example that we can follow to know how to sit in that place to serve him. So this morning, amen, I want to give you three points out of the scripture. I want to show you that as a disciple, that there are some things that we need to understand when it comes to serving others that God may be glorified. First point you need to understand this morning that those who sit in a place to serve others have to first sometimes pause. Pause means that you take a break. It pause means that you sit down sometime and be taught before you go out and teach. Look what the scripture said in that 21st verse. The Bible says, Jesus departed from there in the King James Version. He skirted the seas of Galilee, and he went up on the mountain and sat down before them. So as we look in the scripture this morning, the first thing that we can see that Jesus shows us that every now and then it's okay to take a break. I think if I look around in the room this morning, everybody's sitting down, and I'm the only one standing up. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes, Meaning that you guys have taken a pause that you will receive from me, amen, what God has given me. But there comes a time in my life where I have to take a seat every now and then. And I have to take a seat that God will show me in order how to serve those who are in need. The Bible says that Jesus, he sits down. 
But one thing you need to see in the scripture, amen, he does not, he go, he went up on a mountain and then he sat down. Well, the mountain represents, the mountain represents a place of strength. And as we think about that this morning, saints of God, every one of you have a mountain where God wants you to park at every now and then. It's called a mountain of devotion. And when you go to your mountain, that's where God will speak to you. You remember Moses. Moses went to a mountain. He went to Mount Sinai, and God began to speak to him and share with him what he needed for him to do. You remember Elijah, amen. Elijah went to a mountain. And God spoke to him, Elijah and tells him what the order of the day was. Can I suggest you some thanks of God that God is calling all of us in a place to serve others. But before we can serve them, we have to take a pause. And that pause means that we have to get divine instructions from God that God's people will be served to do everything but fail. And did I tell you, I told you this morning, the Lord spoke to me and said, amen, effort. All he's looking for us, saints of God, is to give effort. And when we give effort, we're able to help someone along life's way. So the first thing we can see in the scripture, that Jesus shows us that every now and then you need to pause. Means you need to sit down at your mountain and let God speak to you that he will be glorified. The second thing that we see in the scripture that Jesus shows us is that not only do he pause, but now after he gets his instructions, he participates. Now I'm still trying to figure this thing out. How can someone say they're a part of something when they're never participating with it? Please help me with that one. Amen. I'm trying to figure that one out. Amen. Because I've met so many people that say they are part of this and they're part of that. Amen. But they never participate of, to be a part. Of, participate, it means to take part in it. That's right. It means to be actively involved in what you say you are actively involved with. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. And as a child of God, we as people of God, if we say that we're part of the ecclesia, if we say that we're part of God and part of his house, there ought to be some times in our lives where we participate with what the church is doing. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm still trying to figure this thing out. How can you be on a roll, but you never actually evolve to be a part of what you say you're on the roll is? I wish I had some help in the room this morning. I'm still trying to figure it out. How can you say that you're a part of something, but you never pay towards it? You never participated with it, and you never supported that God would be glorified. Help me understand that this morning, saints of God, because when I look at Jesus' life, when Jesus says that he was a part of something, he participated with it. Look what the word of God says. I know, amen, it make, I know it feels out this morning, but I'm telling y'all the truth because I'm looking at the word of God and asking myself, how in the world that Jesus is on course, but the people say they follow Jesus is off course. Amen. <laughs> Look what the word of God says. It says, then the great multitude came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the scripture says that because Jesus had taken a pause in his life, his pause causes though that great multitude. And then I tell people quite often that when Jesus is in the Bible, when you look at Jesus' life, you always see people around Jesus. Because Jesus has something good to give the people. Y'all with me this morning. Can I say something to us this morning, saints of God? If we are the light of the world, amen, if we are the salt of the earth, amen, people ought to want to be a part of what we're doing. Are y'all with me this morning? So the scripture says that this great multitude comes to Jesus. And when they come, they come to him looking for him to be Jehovah Raphael. Why? Because the Bible says they brought the lame. They brought the blind. They brought the mute. They brought the main and many others. They came to Jesus believing that he had the power to heal. And that's what the church is, saints of God. Believe it or not, when people come in here, they believe they come into this place to be healed. They don't come in this place to be criticized, to be judged, amen, to be torn down. But they come into the house of faith to be healed. 
And I wish I had one or two people that understand what, I, what I'm saying this morning. There are so many people that have walked away from the ecclesia because sometimes the ecclesia does not understand what the ecclesia is made for. We are his church and his people. And the spirit of God lives on the inside of us. And when people come, we are to heal them. Are y'all with me this morning? So Jesus shows us in the scripture, when this great multitude comes, he don't give them any religious rhetoric. He don't give them, amen, the bylaws and the protocol. But he gave them healing. Come on, saints, amen. He didn't give them no religious rhetoric. He didn't give them the bylaws, amen, and the protocols. But he gave them healing that they would be healed. And may I suggest something this morning? God is still Jehovah Raphael. And when we participate in the things of God, when people come, they'll be healed. I don't know about you. I'm believing God for a group of people to come in this ministry that don't know who Jesus is. I'm believing God that he brings people in here, amen, that don't look like us, that don't smell like us, that do not act like us, that they will be healed in God. Are y'all with me this morning? And I know it's going to ruffle some feathers when they come because they're going to have tattoos all over their face. Amen. Their pants going to be sagging. They're going to have braids. Amen. Amen. Some of them going to smell like liquor and marijuana, but they're coming to the building to be saved. That's right. That's right. Are y'all ready, saints? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, they're coming. And when they come, we better be filled with God to participate that he can heal them. That's right. Word of God says that this was in the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, 12 verse. It says that God, he watches over his word to perform it. And any time that Jesus participates in something, his word is always going to have full course in life. So we see that Jesus, he takes a pause. We see after he takes a pause, he now participates. Because there's never a time in the Bible that we can discover where people come to God who had a heart to receive that Jesus didn't fill them. Saints, we got a heavy manner on our lives when we say that we're disciples of Christ Jesus. Because when people come in our path, we ought to have something to give them. We ought to have something to give them that make them see our God is able to do everything. But Phil, are you with me this morning? Last point that we see that when Jesus participates, his participation causes the multitude now to praise. Okay. Are y'all with me this morning? Every time the choir come up here and they sing and give an effort, it causes you to praise. You don't feel it all right in the beginning because they may not, the sound may not what, be what you're used to, but the longer you listen to the words, it will cause you to praise. Every time I stand in this pulpit, and I begin to start preaching the gospel of Christ Jesus, amen, it may not feel good, but every now and then, it's going to cause you to praise. Are y'all with me this morning? Bible said in the 31st verse, last verse, he says, so the multitude marveled when they saw, come on saints, the multitude marveled when they saw, amen, the mute speak. The man was made whole. The lame, they walked. And the blind, they see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Because where Jesus said, this causes that many in the multitude eyes to be open. And saints of God, may I suggest something this morning. God is still a God who can open blinded eyes. And when blinded eyes are open, they'll begin to start seeing what God is doing out in their life. Every time I see you saints, my eyes are open because it lets me see that God still has his grace and his mercy upon your life. And so it causes me to glorify him. It causes him to, for me to praise him, amen. Every time I see that God is moving on people's lives, it causes me to see and glorify God. So the Bible says that when the multitude eyes was open, they saw what Jesus did. It provoked them to worship God. Are y'all with me this morning? And I don't know about you this morning, saints. 
I praise God for eyes that I can see. And every time I see a man you, Sister Times, it makes me praise God. Every time I see you, amen, amen, Miss Rose, it makes me want to praise God. Every time I see you, Sister Lovick, it makes me want to praise God. Every time I see you, Mrs. Moore, it makes me want to praise God. Miss Clark, can I tell you, every time I hear you sing, and every time I see you, it makes me want to praise God because I know you're not doing it on your own. I know if it wasn't a power that lives on the inside of you, amen, you would not be singing the way you're singing. But every time I hear you sing, it makes me want to give him glory. It makes me want to give him praise because he is a God who has all power in our hands. So the scripture says, the multitude saw something. And what they saw, it made them get excited, Brother Eddie, when they saw the mute speak, when they saw the maim made whole, when they saw the lame walk, when they saw the blind see, they glorified God. Are y'all with me this morning? And saints of God, may I suggest you this morning, that's why the psalmist says in one, Psalms 115.1, he said, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of the loving kindness, because of your truth. The psalmist says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, because your loving kindness, because of your truth. And may I suggest you say some saints this morning that when we see God move in the hour that he's moving in, we ought to give him thanks. We ought to be praising God so much because we went through a pandemic season. And yes, we lost some along the way. But praise God, God brought us out of the season. And now we can walk around and rejoice in him that he is God and beside him there is none other. And so as I come to a close this morning, this message, I understand now what some this meant, Brother Billy, in Psalms 136. One through three. When he says in the psalm, it says it this way, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endured forever. He says, Oh, give thanks unto the, uh, to, unto the, God, of, the God of gods, for his mercy endured forever. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, his mercy endured to, forever to him who alone does great wonders. For his mercy endured forever. I understand, Brother Banks, amen, that many, amen, amen, heart may be mourning this morning. And many hearts may be sad, And many may be going through a storm. But I praise God this morning that we ought to still give thanks to God. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we're able to ask or think through the power that with us. If we're going to worship and praise God. Amen. For the hour that we're in, we got to first find that mountain to go take a pause. And once that mountain, and we're on that mountain, God's going to bring people around us, amen, that we can participate in their lives. And when we as people of God show them love and kindness, when we as people of God show them grace and mercy, I wish I had some help in the room, amen. Then, then amen, and then along, amen, they will glorify God, amen. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I'm excited, amen, because I know that God has set me in a place to serve. Amen. And I'm going to serve God's people until the day I die. Amen. I'm going to serve them, amen, with gladness. I'm going to serve them with joy. I'm going to serve them with patience. And I'm going to serve them with God, with love, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall believe upon him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Thank God this morning to be sent in a place to serve. Jesus has the power, and whatever you need, all you got to do is calm, saints. Whatever you need, all you got to do is ask. Whatever you need, amen, all you got to do is believe by faith. We've been teaching on faith in our Bible study class, and faith is taking God at his word. If God says, if he says in his word, I'll never leave you nor forsake. When you take God in his word, you're walking by faith. If God says in his word, the earth is the Lord, 
and the fullness there are in the world and they that dwell there in it. When you take him at his word, you're walking by faith. If God says in his word, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. If you take him at his word, you're walking by faith. When these multitude of people took Jesus by faith, they bring these lame and sick people to him. But not only was the lame and sick people healed, but the multitude was healed too. Because when Christ worked on their behalf, it caused them to glorify God. Amen. And saints, that's why we as a body of believers, we need to stick very, very closely one with another. Because when God works a miracle in your life, Amen. it caused me to glorify and praise him. When God works a miracle in my life, it calls you to worship and glorify God. That's why we as a people of God got to stay close together. Because the enemy will try to make you believe that God is not working on our behalf. The Bible never said, seeking ye shall find, knocking the door shall be opened, and asking shall be given. It never gave a time limit of when he would do it. But it says to do it, saints. That's why when Miss Clark is saying he'll fix it, 90 plus years of living, I believe she's qualified to say God will fix it, right? We ought to be excited in this room because we have an elder telling us 90 plus years, God will fix it. I believe she's qualified to tell us this God, is, God will fix it, saints. Amen. Don't take light of what we have in the room because what we have in the room, God is speaking through what we have in the room, saints, for our eyes to be open that he is God, and besides him, there is none other. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Going to ask you to stand on your feet this morning. As we do every Sunday in this room, amen, we never assume that everybody's saved. We don't ever assume that everyone is sitting in a place to serve. We never assume that. But we can say this this morning, whether you're in the room or whether you may hear it through the internet, <laughs> maybe somebody will let you see the message. There is purpose for your hands. There is purpose for your lips. Praise God that as long as there's breath in our lungs, God still has purpose for us to do. You just don't know, saints, what a testimony some of you guys are to me. Because y'all let me know, y'all, I'm going to the country now. Y'all let me know God is able. You just don't know what y'all do for me. Amen. I may do a whole lot for you, but I promise you, you're doing a whole lot for me too. Because I appreciate the house that God has called me in. I appreciate the people that God has called me to. Some would say, can these bones live? Yes, they can live. All you got to do is just speak to them kindly, and they'll get up and start moving. I hear preachers make a mockery out of that all the time when they, when they want to, amen, criticize the congregation. But people will live if you preach to them, and you, and you live right towards them. They'll live. So this morning, we're going to give an opportunity. This afternoon, we're going to give an opportunity. Maybe somebody will hear this message not saved. And you don't understand that God has purpose for your life. He's called you out to serve. But the only way you would ever do that is you got to let Jesus become Lord and Savior. Without Jesus becoming Lord and Savior, people give up in the fight and stop doing what they say that God has called them out to do. But if God is God and beside him there is none other, there is no weapon in hell that can stop you from doing all that God has ordained you to do. Pastor, how do I get saved? The Bible says, book of Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It said with the heart, one believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We've looked at that word believe in our, 
in our Bible study class is to think it's be so. That's what believe means, is to think it to be so, saints. And when you believe that God is able, no weapon, nothing can stop you. But you got to believe. You got to trust and believe by faith that God's going to work a miracle on your behalf. And when he works that miracle, worship and praise him. Father, we're thankful again this morning. Lord, for the hour of opportunity you have given us that we can share this good news. I thank you, Lord God, for how you show us in the scripture how Jesus, he pauses. He participates. But God, what happens, he calls them to praise and worship you. Lord, there is no episode, or there are no narratives in the word of God where we can't find something out of that narrative that can help us in the hour that we're living in. Lord, we're living in such a time where nobody wants to do nothing. There is a spirit upon the earth, Lord God, that's causing people, Lord God, to be slowful and complacent. But God, we come against that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, the same thing that you tell Adam, you said you give him dominion over the fish of the sea over oh, the birds of the air, over oh, the fowl, and every creeper thing upon the earth. We speak that upon your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this ministry. I thank you for this house. I thank you, God, for these people. I thank you, Lord God, that you've told us to prophesy to them, and they will live. And so, Lord God, we speak to them this morning, God, and say you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. We thank you for that today, God. You said, Lord God, that death and life is in the power of our tongue. So, God, we speak life in this place. We speak growth, Lord God. We speak unity, God. We speak oneness in the name of Jesus. Lord, we even speak prosperity, God. That you are Jehovah, you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. So every need that we have, God, we trust and believe by faith. We speak Jehovah Raphael. God, many are faced with ailments in their bodies. But we thank you by faith that you've told us that you was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement upon you for our peace. And with your stripes we're healed. God, we speak healing in this place. We speak healing in this ministry, God. We speak brokenness, God, shall be, shall be bound up. We speak, Lord God, healing to take place in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray you continue on having your way. Speak to us. As the scripture came forth, you said in the last days, you're going to pour your spirit out on all flesh. You said young men and young women would dream dreams. Old men and women would, Lord, no, young men and women would see visions. Old men and women would dream dreams. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we, your people, Lord God, will re re receive the dream you've given us, that, God, you may be glorified. We love you, Father. We praise you. We thank you. We magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, choir. Amen. Bless us as we prepare to go home. <laughs>
us bow for the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Lord, let it rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, we pray in the name of Jesus as we go forward, God, we would always make an effort. Lord God, that you would be pleased with our service. We honor you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you.